what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today, I want to go over the top 10 cards in Clash Royale that I feel are the most nerf-proof. Nerf-proof meaning that these are cards you can hopefully invest your hard-earned gold in card requests and trade tokens into upgrading and not have to be super worried about them no longer being viable or meta in the future. So the three criteria that we're going to use for this list is going to be track record. So how long has this card already been meta how long has it been good in the game number two is utility is the card unique in its utility it doesn't mean everything about a card's nerf proofness but you know is the card unique enough that another card's not going to come along and replace it and be so much better and then the third factor is going to be versatility which is a big one how many decks does this card fit into because sometimes if you upgrade one card say princess and you only really see princess mostly in bait decks well if bait is isn't viable and popular, then the princess isn't going to be super viable and popular. Not to say that it's going to be useless, but I'm going to also factor in the number of decks and the deck types that these cards fit into. Of course, some will also be win conditions. So with that said, guys, let's go ahead and get to the list with number 10. Number 10 is going to be the Ice Golem. So the Ice Golem isn't in the best spot right now, but I don't think that's an indictment on the card itself. Ice Golem costs two elixir, it's building targeting, it's a glass tank, it deals death damage, it deals freeze damage, and it's perfect for kiting to the opposite lane. All that value in two elixir. I think that the reason the use rates are a little bit low right now at the time of this recording is more because of the dominance of Barbarian Barrel than the lackluster ability of the Ice Golem. I think that the Ice Golem is always going to be a solid and safe investment, again, for your gold, for a rare card that fits into a bunch of different decks. That's why it makes number 10 on the list. Let's move on to number 9. Goblin Gang. Out of all the Swarm cards in the game, I decided to go with Goblin Gang on this list because the Goblin Gang has always been meta since the very first day it was introduced to the game. Unlike its counterparts, I guess, the Goblins and the Spirit Goblins, they've both been in and out of the meta, but you put them together in one three elixir card and now you're talking. The Goblin Gang fits into three Musketeer decks, it fits into Zap Bait decks, it fits into Log Bait decks, and of course it has a home in many other decks such as Hog Cycle, Lava Hound, and I could just keep going on. The amount of versatility you get whether you want to split them as a starting play or just apply pressure at the bridge to bait out your opponent's spells, the Goblin Gang seems to have it all. Goblin Gang definitely belongs on this list at number 9. Let's go ahead and check out number 8. Alright, I'm going to cheat here, guys, and give you four cards for the price of one. It's going to be four spell cards. My two favorite small spells and my two favorite big spells to invest in. And let's face it, almost every single deck in the game runs at least one, sometimes two, or even three spells. So, they're always a good investment for your time and your gold. So, Zap, The Log... Fireball and Poison for me are the big four safe spells. Again, they get run in a ton of different decks. Even though Barbarian Barrel is super popular right now, it's new and it's kind of niche. The log has always been around and it's always safe and it always presents value. So that's why I'm including that on the list. Zap is a great card to upgrade and the interactions definitely change. And Fireball and Poison, they're just the best big spell cards in the game in terms of safety at least. Where we see Lightning and Rocket kind of fall in and out of the meta from time to time. So that's why I would make sure I err on the side of showing a little extra love to the fireball in the poison over rocket and lightning. So guys, that's going to be number eight. Let's go on and check out number seven on the list. Coming in at number 7 is the Giant. Ever since the Helsinki tournament back in 2016, with the Jason deck, Giant has been a staple of both competitive and also casual and ladder play. The Giant is just so much value. When you talk about Giant, you have to talk about value. For 5 Elixir, you're getting really probably the second best tank in the game next to the Golem. Certainly the second best ground tank, with all apologies to the Lava Hound. Giant, even with the 2% HP 
be nerfed in this last balance update. He hadn't been nerfed in a long, long time before that. And even with that, he's still incredibly viable. His win and use rates haven't really dipped. He's just an incredible value again for that five elixir. And he remains a staple of free to play players being a little bit easier to level up than the more expensive golem being an epic card. So you can actually put out requests for the giant and focus on that being your main rare upgrade and your win condition. He fits in different types of giant decks as well. There's giant three musketeers, there's classic giant beatdown, there's even giant minor triple spell decks. So that's why giant for me is going to make number seven on the list. Next up on the list is Baby Dragon. Baby Dragon's a card that you never hear people screaming needs a nerf or it's OP, but it's always been viable, especially since they introduced the Tornado to the game, which synergizes amazingly well with the Baby Dragon. Baby Dragon's always had a home in Golem decks, being so unique, being the only card in the game that is air and also provides a lot of splash damage and also a decent amount of HP. It doesn't die to the fireball and the poison and the zap of the opponent it actually is pretty robust and now with the tornado it fits in the rebirth of the splash yard decks it fits in minor control decks and lava hound decks the baby dragon is an underrated card and it's also a very safe bet to continue being meta in the future Coming in at number five is Musketeer in Three Musketeers. Musketeer has been a tried and true four elixir air targeting support card since day one of this game and things have never really changed. Would you believe me if I told you that Musketeer has never received a nerf, guys? Even with the introduction of many other cards, Musketeer still finds her way to do her thing defensively and of course offensively as a support card in a variety of different decks. You'd have to go back all the way to 2016 to find the last time either three musketeers or musketeer was nerfed in the game and that was only with elixir reduction and also stat reduction so three musketeers used to be 10 elixir and musketeer used to be five elixir so they had to reduce the stats to change the elixir cost but really these cards are super super powerful even three musketeers is a win condition when they add cards where people initially think "Ooh, this might be an issue for three musketeer users Somehow, three Musketeer players are able to adapt. For example, Royal Recruits, they were able to add it to the three Musketeer decks to make them even stronger, rather than just looking that at the Recruits as a powerful counter to the three Musketeers when played at the bridge. So that's why three Musketeers and Musketeer come in at number five on the list. Let's check out number four. Number four is going to be Golem, the big daddy of all tanks in the game. It has the most HP, it has the death damage, it has two Golemites, and they have the death damage. It's always been an absolute powerhouse and a staple of the heaviest beatdown decks in the game. I can't really remember them ever nerfing Golem. I'm sure they have, but Golem just seems to always be viable no matter the meta. A lot of people kind of look down on Golem saying that it's the lowest skill cap card in the game or the lowest skill cap deck in the game but there's no doubt about it just like every other deck while it might be a little bit easier to pick up and learn there's definitely an element of skill and strategy that goes into improving your game using the card i think that golem still remains the best big tank to invest in in the game even more so than giant a little bit more difficult to upgrade because it's an epic but that shouldn't stop you from investing in the golem as i don't think he'll be going anywhere anytime soon that's why he comes in at number four on the list. Coming in at number three on the list is another two card entry here. It's Skeletons and Ice Spirit. I wanted to group them together because they're the only two one elixir cards in the game. That makes them the best cycle cards in the entire game. And they have a home in many different decks. They're unique enough that you can put them together and make a super fast cycle deck, such as 2.6 Hog Cycle or a Minor Cycle deck. 
Now, skeletons do a great job at kiting and cycling, and they even put out a decent amount of DPS for a one elixir card. Sometimes you can even bait out a zap if you place them, say, on a giant of the opponent. And Ice Spirit is a great card for one elixir. It can stun and do damage to even air cards. And if the, gr if the cards are all grouped up together in one small confined space, it can do that AoE damage, stunning everything in the lane. So that's why these two cycle cards come in at number three on our list. Number two might surprise some of you guys, but I feel pretty strongly about the card, and it's Mega Minion. Mega Minion has always been one of the best support cards in the game ever since the day it was introduced, in my opinion, and despite a few nerfs here and there, it remains one of the best, especially in beatdown decks, a giant Mega Minion combo, or a Golem Mega Minion combo, or a Lava Hound Mega Minion combo has always been a staple of beatdown, and that's not just beatdown, it fits in some minor decks, it fits in all kinds of decks, it even fits into Siege decks in a big way. Expo usually runs Mega Minion as well. So Mega Minion is just so strong, it's an air card that can chop down tanks relatively quickly. It's air, so it's difficult to target and destroy from the opponent's perspective, and it doesn't die to fireball. What a versatile and value card the Mega Minion is, and I really can't see that changing anytime in the future. A card that's always been viable and I hope it will continue to always be moving forward. And number one on our list is going to be the Miner. Miner is such an incredible, versatile card that really has always been meta ever since the day it was introduced. It's one of the strongest, if not the strongest, legendary card when you just think about the unique skill set that it has. It has the ability to go anywhere on the opponent's side of the arena. Now, two plus years ago, when the Miner was introduced to the game, it blew our minds that Supercell was adding this mechanic and this dynamic into the game, but now we kind of take it for granted, I feel. I think that they ought to come out with more cards like the Miner because it's so unique and it's so cool and it opens up new doors of strategy and tactics into the game that weren't previously there. The Miner is also a super versatile card when it comes to the type of decks that it fits in. It can be a win condition all on its own. It can be in a Lava Hound deck, in a Giant deck, in a Golem deck I'm even seeing it in. It can be in a Control deck. It can be a second win condition with a Hog Rider, a second win condition with a Mortar card. Miner really fits in almost every single archetype, and it's a win condition on its own, and it can punish pumps. Think about it in three Musketeer decks. The Miner, for three Elixir is definitely one of the most nerf proofs, the most nerf proof card in the game, in my opinion. And they really haven't nerfed it in the past. I don't see them doing it in the future. Miner is a super strong and safe card to invest in. No matter what archetype is your favorite in the game, I think Miner will have a good home in your deck or in your card collection. So that's it, guys. That's my list. What cards did I forget? Which cards do you think ought to have been in the top 10? And if you're going to tell me which cards I forgot, make sure you tell me which cards you would take off and replace it with your suggestions in the comments below. Guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn on the bell if you like the content. I do opinion pieces and, and list videos like this, along with pro tips and other fun series. Check out my YouTube partner, Bren Chong, in the show notes below as well. He does giveaways and all kinds of awesome community initiatives. Make sure you show him some love. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And as always, take care, guys.